Oh, look at Chase riding probably the first V100 Mandelo to hit the U.S. coast. Guys, this one is going to be a special first ride. What's going on guys, Jason Tools here at Mountain Motor Switch in Roswell and in front of us, guys, in front of me, I have one of the first 2023 Moto Guzzi V100 Mondellos to get to the US thanks to our buddies over at Southeast Motorcycle over in Douglasville, Georgia. Those guys just got this in. They actually got it in yesterday. They uncrated it yesterday, and today they're letting us borrow it to do a first ride for you guys. This is such a rare motorcycle. I am so thankful to those guys for letting us borrow it. Today should be an awesome day. You guys stick around towards the end of the video and I'm gonna let you know if I would purchase or pass on the V100 Mondello. But this is a first ride, so we gotta see what it looks like and we gotta see what it sounds like. Right, guys this first ride is not sponsored but it is supported by our website wbrgarage.com where i'm currently building a 2018 semi used and wrecked yamaha r6 i'm building it into a dream bike and i'm going to give it away to one of our members over at wbrgarage.com if you guys want to win the current build you can go over there grab a membership grab some merch whatever you want to grab everything will automatically get you guys entries to win our r6 build so go check that out it incredibly helps the channel out and it helps us make awesome videos like this it's time to ride this thing all right guys 2023 Moto v 100 Mandelo. All right, so guys, uh, I'm 5'10", got a 32-inch inseam. As you can see, I have flat feet and can control the motorcycle, which is kind of surprising. Let's get this thing turned on. We got a very cool TFT. Oh, hold on, wait, what? They, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It turns on, they open up when I'm in rain mode. Okay, I really love that. All right, guys, we have a lot of stuff to talk about in the dash. I'm not going to be able to talk about anything, but here's what I'm going to do. This bike has four modes. I'm going to show them all to you by pressing that button. It has sport road, touring, and rain. You guys can pause the video and see what the settings are for each of those. I'm going to leave them on as they are, but that's the info if you're interested. So uh, what we're going to do... All right, guys, so guys, we're going to start out in rain mode. Good God, that thing went sideways. We do, if you notice, have a sideways mounted V-twin on this thing, so this ride should be very interesting. All right, let's get her going, boys. Uh, so if you guys wanna check out our Discord page, we got a Discord full of motorcycle enthusiasts, probably like yourself, so I would invite you to go check it out while we wait. It is time to be off in the V100 Mandelo. God. <laughs> my goodness gracious alrighty guys we are here on the 2023 V100 Mondello from our buddies over at Mitoguzzi this is a brand new touring model that they uh, recently released it has got like I said that uh, transversely mounted V-twin what's going on gents 
This thing's looking at, uh, I think, 1,054 cc's, something like that. Power-wise, we're looking at 115 horsepower and 77 foot-pounds of torque. So it's not putting down insane numbers, but as a touring bike, I feel like this thing might hit a sweet spot. I cannot wait to find out during this first ride for you guys. Also, the price tag coming in at around $17,000, so it ain't cheap. Alrighty guys, this is a first ride. Let's talk about body position. Uh, so right now, I have a very cupped seat. It's holding me in place really well. One of the things I am noticing is the seat kind of gets thin up front. And that, I think, is what allowed me to get both feet down because I don't feel like the seat height is necessarily low, but because the seat gets thin up front, it helps you get your feet down. Now, as far as body position-wise, my legs are tucked back a little bit. My top half is almost straight up, and I've got some draped arms down. This is a very comfortable body position. I will say, I think the seat might need to be a little softer but other than that, I think this is a great body position for a touring bike. It's very comfortable. I'm very chill. Nothing really to worry about. That's got a really good sound when you when you crank on the throttle. All right, guys, we've been in rain mode. I mean, rain mode's great. It puts the traction control all the way up, even though, as you guys saw in that menu in the beginning, you can customize all the modes. Uh, but I'm here for touring mode now to change modes i'm pressing this button here and one of the things i do kind of wish they would have done is when i hit the mode button i want it to naturally go from the lowest mode and progress upwards whereas this bike does the opposite so if i press the button touring should be the next to slowest but it goes from high to low i can't with the active arrow it's hilarious uh, so that's kind of a weird like directional thing. I, I wish the direction would give you progressively more power uh, But it is what it is not a huge deal now in touring mode. I noticed the active arrow Is set up to be turned on above 25 miles per hour So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that it should automatically do that on its own Which is kind of crazy check out uh this as well i've got this side menu right here if i press this button up look at it oh my god i love i'm a child i'm literally a child and you give me little controls for shit like that and you've sold me i don't i don't care if it works or not it is the coolest shit ever all right hold on we gotta watch 25 miles an hour let's see if they pop out they do Oh, they do. That's amazing. I love it. I love it so much. It's so cool. Uh, from what I understand, this is the first motorcycle ever to use active aero like that. Which is kind of insane that it was come from a company like Moto Guzzi. Uh, that's, that's just awesome. Uh, so guys, as far as uh, riding this bike on city streets like we are now, as you guys can see, we've got a handlebar, and I feel like I have a great amount of control of this bike. Uh, I've got no problems. The bike is a little heavier, 514 pounds, but that weight is entirely cloaked uh, with how this bike is proportioned. I feel like I can cut through traffic. I really like the power delivery uh, from this V-Twin. 115 horsepower is not a ton, but I feel like it's a great amount for just playing around in traffic here on city streets. I do notice that when I get on throttle, there's a little bit of a, an area in the very beginning where it, it's a little abrupt. It hits kind of hard. I uh, did notice that. Oh, and it's got the balance. I can sit there and do the little balance thing. That's great. So far, I'm liking touring mode a lot. And most of that is based on the power delivery right now. I feel like the power is tamed down a lot, which helps you to have a more smooth ride while you're in town. You don't want to be jerking all over the place. And we'll jump in that left lane. Oh, and it's still got a good amount of power to just cut through traffic. We're going to get stuck in this lane, I have a feeling. Oh, that's such a good sound, man. And that's stock exhaust. 
I keep forgetting we have up and down quick shifter and I, I keep uh, using the clutch so I'm gonna try to utilize the quick shifter more now we'll use it up here to come to a stop and see what it's all about quick shifter not wanting to go from second to first okay noted this is one of the things I was talking about balance guys I can get this bike going next to nowhere and because the balance is so well I'm able to just go like super slow look at that speeds not even registering on the dash and I'm able to just keep it balanced and I've only been on this bike for like an hour right now I do notice when I come to a stop especially when I put it into neutral I get a lot of shaking do you guys see the mirrors the bike does a lot of shaking I'm imagining because that uh, engine is mounted uh, from the side the bike has like a almost Harley level of shake good god <laughs> anytime I'm in neutral and I click into first on this bike I get this jump forward very aggressive I don't know if that guy was recording he was recording me okay cool <laughs> Um, how dare you record me in public as I record myself <laughs> yeah the transmission's a little strange I'm gonna talk more about it later but right now I noticed that there it's really punchy it it hits you hard when you're using the transmission the up and down quick shifter and when I go from first uh, to neutral to first the bike almost lurches forward which is kind of a strange feeling you need to be ready for that does this BMW see me at all I don't think they do all right, let's get this thing leaned over and see what's up. Interesting. Got a little, got a little heavy as we got it leaned all the way over. I am not getting behind a truck with shit hanging out of it like that. All right, let's get into let's get into uh, what is it? Road mode. All right, road mode is the next to highest mode. I'm trying to progress us up through the modes, guys, and that way after the highway we can decide what mode we like the most. And by we. I do mean me. So we're in road mode now. We were in touring mode. So now my active arrow is not going to automatically pop up because on the menu it is not set to do that. Okay, quick shifter feels night and day better under pressure. Like as you're accelerating, quick shifter feels okay. It has a hit still. But it's a lot more subtle and it feels so much better it's when you're kind of just lollygagging with the bike that the quick shifter seems a little clunky so it just has a a situation that it wants to work well in we're gonna go around this car this power delivery is so fun for city streets i thought it was going to be a little underpowered honestly that is not seeming to be the case. Let's do a little brake check. God almighty. Brakes might be a little too strong. Just kidding. That's not a thing. Oh, let's get into sport mode. All right, we're in sport mode. We are prepared for our 40 to 80 pull, fam. Yeah, so guys, uh, getting the, those brakes, uh, the, this thing's got Brembo's up front. They are bitey from the get-go. And now, to be fair, this bike is brand new. So the uh, it does not have a ton of miles. Those brakes will kind of wear in over time. So I, I don't want to judge them too harshly. All I know is they are incredibly strong. We love us a strong brake. We love coming to a stop. All right, guys, we're coming up on the highway, and this is a touring modeled motorcycle. So I got high expectations here. We're in sport mode. I've got my little windscreen all the way up. We're going to see how she goes. A little a little lurchy, going kind of kind of oscillating in sport mode under minimal throttle. Interesting. That does not feel good at all. I don't like that. <laughs> sport mode wants to be going. It does not want to be just chilling. It's doing it again, man. This bike just wants to get some. That's all it wants. All right, guys, 40 to 80 pull on a 2023 Moto Guzzi V100 Mondello. Ah, Jesus help us. All right, on your mark. Get set. Get set, waiting for that white car, and go. That was fun. I like the feeling of that power. 
good god at the cars. Let's just watch as this ram runs everybody over. Man, I love the way this Torquey V-Twin pulls you down the road, man. That feels awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, we're here on the highway with the V100 Mandelo. Power-wise, we've got plenty. 115 doesn't sound like a ton, but that is ample power to get you where you're going on the highway. I am going far too fast. <laughs> so guys, right now the wind is hitting me right in the middle of the visor. Not an ideal place. My head is going around a little bit. If I tuck down, I get into a total wind bubble, which is fantastic. Yeah, I wish the wind would go a little bit over my head. So that's not ideal. Now, stability-wise, this thing is locked here on the highway. And right now, I can feel some wind on my side, but I want to test out going into touring mode and getting the active aero. Okay, that's weird. So the active aero actually takes all the wind off of your waist and seems to be pushing it over my waist. I'm not feeling any wind from like my waist down right now during this area with the active aero. That's insane. That's pretty awesome for touring, especially if it was cold outside. I can imagine that would be great. Speaking of cold outside, it does have heated grips by default. And what have I told you guys about touring bikes? You cannot call your bike a touring bike if it does not have cruise control. So here we uh, hold the button in, I believe. That starts at blinking. I press it in one more time. And now we are on cruise control. Love that, working fine. I don't love this uh, holding it in thing. That's not my favorite, but it does its job fine. So I got no problems with that. Touring mode is definitely the mode you want to be in while on the highway. But we are coming to the end of the highway. So I'm going to maneuver myself over here. So far, mirrors are working fantastic on the highway. I can totally see why this would be considered a touring bike. Only modification I would make is I would maybe get one of those uh, windshield modifications that clips on, that uh, blocks the wind over it. I bet you if you got that, that'd send the wind straight over your head. All right, guys, we're gonna shift down a little bit. And we're gonna go through this turn and uh, see how this thing feels. Earlier on the street, turning over didn't feel the most amazing. Putting it back into sport mode. We should have the most uh, active and dynamic. I wonder if I didn't have it in the best setting because now it feels totally fine leaned over. I still don't like that power, you know, that little lurchiness on the throttle. But as far as suspension, it feels way better. Uh, and I believe I had it in touring mode when I was in the city and I didn't like the way it felt when I leaned it over. It felt like it got a little sluggish leaned over. But in sport mode, that, that totally went away. All right, guys, I'm going to get it into road mode, and then we're going to go over to the camera car. Thanks to our buddies over at Cardo and see what the people in the camera car think about the V100 Mandelo. The favorite part about this Moto Guzzi Sport Tour has got to be that front active arrow between the windshield and the little pop-ups on the side. It is badass. I'm a fan. Yeah, I love the way this looks. Uh, I love it when it's fully deployed. The only thing that's uh, bothering me is that gold valve cover butt. Uh, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. All right, guys in the camera car, thank you so much for your opinions. Even more so, thank you, Cardo, for sponsoring the First Ride Series. If you guys want to get 10% off the best Bluetooth communicators for motorcyclists, uh, we got a Cardo link for you in the description that will get you 10% off. Thank you, Cardo. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about power delivery. Power delivery is awesome on this bike. I love that really grunty V-twin power. Like, it's very torquey. It pulls you along, and it's even really fun on the highway, which was I was surprised about. Uh, the only thing I don't love about the power is more of like how the power comes on. The very beginning of throttle input, there is a little bit of a, a hit, and that disrupts the bike a little bit. Not a huge fan about that. Suspension-wise, it is totally dependent on your settings. Like I told you guys, you can change all of your settings. In the softer setting, it does feel a little sluggish leaned all the way over. 
but the solution for that is to put it into a more aggressive suspension setting you've got i believe four suspension settings you can change it is also an electronic suspension so it will electronically change for you uh, i think if you have it in the softer mode it is far more comfortable but if you put it in that uh more dynamic mode it feels much better leaned over so the settings actually matter on this bike uh when it comes to the gearing i feel like the gearing matches the v-twin really well i get that fun like shifting through the gears feeling uh at no point did i feel like a gear was too short or too tall no problems there i will say with the shifting i have what is that okay I will say with the shifting, it is a bit aggressive. You get hit pretty hard when you're shifting. If you're not under pressure, if you're not throttling it through or coming to a tight stop or a hard stop, you're not going to feel great using the quick shifter. I find myself in city settings. I'm just using the clutch because I prefer the feeling of that. I feel like the only time you should really use the uh, up and down quick shifter is probably when you're doing spirited riding it's just it, it upsets the bike too much when you're you're kind of just kind of chilling around town also uh i i touched on it a little bit earlier but brakes are incredibly strong the brembos that they have up front are absolutely killing the game uh we are brand new here let me see how many miles this thing has we got tire pressure monitoring we love that 93. i think i we I think uh, the guys gave us this bike at like, I don't know, 15. So 93 is all us. So the brakes need a little more time to uh, get in. But, uh, oh, look, you can change charge control from here. That's pretty cool. I like the setting where you can, so that's heated grips. I like the setting where you can change the windscreen up and down because that is just the coolest shit ever. I'm, I'm getting Harley vibes so hard just sitting here with all the shaking. <laughs> Interestingly, I didn't really notice a lot of shaking on the highway though. I might have been distracted, but... All right, guys, let's talk about the cockpit area of the bike. Uh, first off, all the controls. The controls feel fine. Uh, I don't know if they feel $17,000 fine. But I've been getting a tactile click every time I use the controls. I've had none of them get stuck or not work correctly. So I can't complain about them. But for 17 grand, I do kind of want to feel, I want to have that Triumph feel. I want to have that Ducati feel. And I don't know if these controls are all the way there, but you might not even give a shit about stuff like that. I love the blacked out levers. They are adjustable. They are Brembo's. They feel great. I get a great feel out of them, so no problems there. Please don't go. Okay, thank you. The mirrors don't look great, and they vibrate a lot, especially when not moving, but I'm being able to see everything around me, so I can't really complain about those. We've got the active windscreen that works awesome. I do wish it got air a little above us, like I was saying on the highway. Now, talking about the actual screen, love that it's a TFT dash. It's got a really cool animation when you turn the bike on. I will say there is a ton of info on the screen, and I do feel like the menu navigation is a little clunky. You know, I don't want to use the word clunky. I want to say it's not, um, it's not easily figured out by the user. Like, when we pick the bike up, we got a run-through of all the settings. I think if I wouldn't have got that run-through, I could have eventually figured out the menu, but you guys got to understand, I'm used to being on motorcycles and trying to figure stuff out. I think it's a little less intuitive than I wish it would be. Some things I do appreciate when you start digging into the menu and you start going into like the suspension settings, Moto Guzzi does that thing where they highlight the element that you're adjusting, like the suspension or the power. That's really cool and I appreciate that. The only other company I see doing that is Ducati and that is a primo. I absolutely love that. Overall, I'd give the screen in the the upper, you know, marks. The only thing I would uh, give it negative marks for would be the... It's a little confusing to get through. There's a lot of info on the screen. I appreciate all the info, but I feel like it might be able to be laid out a little more user-friendly. But the fact that I have all the info, I have all the rider aids, I am appreciative of all that. And, you know, that's one of those things when... When you have a lot of rider aids, 
you now have a lot of things, a lot of information to tell the writer. Uh, I get it is, it is challenging. I haven't really had a problem finding any information on the screen personally. All right, guys, we're going to pull off up here and do a little walk around of the V100 Mandela because it is such a unique motorcycle. And I think that's why a lot of you guys are so interested in it. I mean that, and it has active aero, which is arguably the coolest thing you could possibly have on a motorcycle. You know what? Let's just park in our little cheeky 144. Looks like it's an option today. All right, guys. 2023 Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo. This is the S model. I think, I think I forgot to say that, but the S model is the only one that comes in this colorway. Look how big that engine seems. I don't know. To me, the engine just seems huge. Got a short little stubby exhaust. I love the way the rear tire looks and like how it goes in at a single-sided swing arm. Looks freaking dope. Uh, you've got plug-ins for side luggage if you want to add those, which I think is awesome. This is a touring bike. It's made for stuff like that. Uh, you guys can see we've got the Olins up front, the Brembos there, and we have the Olins rear shock as well. Overall, I think the look is it, it's so unique. It's so cool. Let me show you guys what this DRL looks like in the front because it's so cool. Look at that look. That is such a cool vibe. It's really giving BMW, the way it has the cylinder heads kind of poked out, and we have the headers just kind of coming down on each side. Very unique look and uh, shaft driven, if we haven't mentioned that yet. And of course, we have Brembo's in the rear. I think looks wise, this is just such a unique motorcycle. Interestingly, from here, the screen, you guys might disagree, but from here, the screen kind of looks tiny. I've never thought that while riding it, but uh, it kind of seems like that. Very unique looking motorcycle. Then you got on top of this, it's kind of unique in like an old way, if you guys understand what I'm saying. But then it kind of has this like classic futuristic look, and then it has the active aero shit, which isn't classic. It's like brand new, so it's, it's kind of strange, and I kind of love it because of that. Uh, so guys, I'm going to get my phone out and do some vertical video for our fans over on Instagram and TikTok. If you're not following us on Instagram, we're at C, the number two W picks. And on TikTok, we are at Chase on Two Wheels. So I'm going to film some vertical content. I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, that is it for our vertical content videos. Uh, so we're going to get back on this thing. I'm going to do a steering stem lock test, and then i got to make a decision. Who is this bike for, and would I purchase or pass on it? Let's find out. We got a big handlebar situation. I got to expect... God, did you see the bike just shake sideways? That's so neat. And then that. Good God. All right. I got high expectations with the handlebar. Let's see what it's got. That's interesting. That is a far worse turnaround test than, or handlebar lock test than I expected. That's really interesting because going at slow speeds, I've got no problem maneuvering through the parking lot. I thought it would have a, a higher turning radius than that. That's, that's super interesting. Can we go? Can we go? Ooh, easy can we go. Of course, but of course you can. Note to self, Will Wheelie. Oh my goodness, this bike came straight up. It consequently went straight to neutral when I uh, quick shifted upwards, but that was fun. All right, guys, let's talk about who is the ideal person for this bike. Now, with a purchase price of over 17 grand, it is somebody that's got some cash because I think this bike is really cool but i don't know if it's specifically 17 grand cool when it comes to performance now little things like the active era make it an incredibly fun bike to ride but as far as performance wise you can definitely get this performance cheaper than 17 grand the thing you're not going to get for 17 grand is the rarity of having this motorcycle i have never seen one of these they're brand new to the market and from what I can tell, these things are going to be in very high demand. So what you get for 17 grand is a motorcycle that performs super good. 
but also is incredibly unique in the market. And I think that's probably where that money is gonna go. I think anybody that purchases this that wants to do some touring on it, especially if you got a set of bags and stuff, this thing would be super fun. And then you get to play with the, uh, the windshield and stuff along the way. It's got phone connectivity so you can do all of your phone controls from your uh, motorcycle controls up here. I think that's really neat. And I think overall, I haven't ridden a lot of Moto Guzzi's, but if this is the vibe of what Moto Guzzi's is about, then I want to ride way more of these things. This thing has been super fun, super unique, and uh, I really appreciate having the opportunity. Now, would I purchase or pass? I've got my MT-10 that I've got set up for touring, and I think it does an incredible job, and it doesn't cost 17 grand. I will say, I love the electronic suspension. I love the windscreen and the active aero, but I couldn't personally justify 17 grand. I mean, if you got the cash, I, I, I think it's a different conversation. Definitely find a local dealer and uh, go sit on one of these and do a test ride if you can. So guys, before I get out of here, I want to give a shout out to Southeast Motorcycle. If it wasn't for those guys uh, loaning us the first V100 Mondello in the U.S., I would not be able to be here putting this first shot out for you guys. Shout out to those guys. If you want to check them out, I'll put a link to their videos. I think they're doing an unboxing video and some other videos on this motorcycle. I'll put a link for those videos in their channel in the description if you guys want to go check them out. Big shout out to those guys. Really appreciate them loaning us this awesome bike. But guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. Make sure to put OC in your comment. That stands for Outro Crew because you made it to the end. You guys go out there and ride safe, and I'll see you on the next first ride. Later.